Hi, this is Tim, and today I'm going to try to address something that I hear quoted often that isn't quite correct. Recently, someone put in the comments to make sure that I realize that the last rung always wins. Sounds like it's time for a video. So I'm going to use these two rungs right here to try to go through why the last rung doesn't always win. I'm going to do it for a few reasons. One, these are two very, very common rungs, which it would not take much to make a mistake and accidentally have both of them go into the same output. Now, I know there are people out there that say there are rules that say you can't have duplicate destructive bits, but you can. I mean, I can put 20 OTEs to the same address. It will let me do it. So while it may not be a good practice, it is important that we understand what exactly the PLC does with these duplicate bits. The other reason for this is we actually already have an article that has these two rungs in it. And in that article, we have a survey. So we have collected data from people over the years of how they think these rungs work. And what shocks me every time is there is a dead split down the middle of half think it's going to do one thing and half think it's going to do the other thing. Whereas if we go through the basic steps of how a PLC program scans, we'll get it right every time. So I have these two rungs already in RS Logix 500. I've downloaded and we're online with them. The question is, which rung wins? All right, so in a second, I'm going to ask you to pause your video. Because hopefully I get my directions right. Either here or here, there's going to be a card come up. And it's going to take you to a survey about which rung you think is going to win. And several other questions. Which rung actually is controlling output zero in this situation? Is it rung zero or is it rung one? And whichever one you think it is, why do you think it is? What will happen when switch one is turned to the right or turned on? What will happen when switch one is turned back to the left or off? What will happen when the green button is pressed? What will happen when the green button is released? And what will happen when the red button is pressed while switch one is on? Those are the basic questions. So please pause your video for a second, go over there, check that out, and come back and hit play again. The first question is which rung is actually controlling output zero and why? The most common answer I get for this and shockingly, the one I see in most books is that rung one wins because it's going to overwrite anything that rung zero did. So the green button will turn the red light on and the red button will turn the red light off. Now we're going to wait a little bit and come back to that one because we're going to go step by step through the other questions first and then we're going to go through how this program actually scans. What will happen when switch one is turned to the right? According to this last rung wins, Rung zero is not going to do anything because rung one is going to overwrite whatever it does, which means our green button is going to turn our green light on and our red button is going to turn it off. So we'll switch switch one on and our green light comes on. As you can see, our green light's on and our red button's off. So this is going to keep our green light sealed in when we turn switch one off. It looks like switch one still turned off the green light. Am I saying that the first rung wins? Well, let's continue on. The next question was, what will happen when the green button is pressed? The green button is pressed, the green light comes on. Now, what's going to happen when I release this green button? Because obviously now I definitely have a seal in. We've got a solid seal in right here. So there's nothing that could possibly turn this green light off. But when I let go of the button, the green light comes off. We've kind of established, looks like switch one is definitely controlling this green light. So we're gonna switch switch one back on. And now I'm gonna ask you, what's gonna happen when the red button is pressed? Since switch one is controlling it, we have to assume the red button does nothing, right? The red button turns it off. Back to our original question then. Which rung wins? What is controlling this? Well, the simple fact is the PLC program controls the green light. And if we go step by step through this, we're going to see exactly why. Like we've talked about in every program scan lesson we've done, first thing a PLC does is reads its input. It goes through and says, do I have current? 
If it does, it writes a one into the input data box. If it doesn't, it writes a zero. Then it's gonna execute its program. First rung, left, right, all the way to the bottom until it sees the end. And then it is going to update its outputs. When you first look at these and when you look at them alone, rest, it looks like switch one, green light. That one's pretty obvious. But down here, if we don't have a green button, then we have no way to seal this in. Let's walk through the program. So our XIC instruction here is going to go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash four. Does it have one? No. So it goes with false conditions to the OTE. An OTE with false conditions says go write a zero. Where? To O colon zero backslash zero. Then it goes to the next rung. The XIC here says go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Does it have one? No. So it's false. It gets here to this branch and it goes to the next level of the branch. And it says go look for a one. Where? An O colon zero backslash zero. Does it have one? No. These two branches are false. So this XIC is going to start off with false conditions and it's going to say go look for a zero. Where? and I colon zero backslash two. Do I have one? Yes. So it's going to be true. But we don't have a continuous path of trues from the left to our OTE. So our OTE is going to be false. A false OTE goes and writes a zero. Where? To O colon zero backslash zero. Now we're going to switch switch one on. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, it's always been mind-boggling to me. This question of the survey is split nearly 50-50. 50% say wrong zero, 50% say wrong one. If we just go right through the logic, we'll see the answer. This says go look for a one. Where? In O colon zero backslash four. Do I have a one? Yes. It is true. So it goes to this OTE, which at that point, that first scan was false, but it comes in with true conditions. And a true OTE is going to go to write a one. Where? To O colon zero backslash zero. Now that is just writing into this data table. It is not actually turning on this light. Then it's going to go to rung one. It's going to say, go look for a one at I colon zero backslash zero. And we're going to see we have a zero. So that is going to be false. It's going to come to the end of the branch and it's going to go to the next level down the branch. This one says, go look for a one. Where? An O colon zero backslash zero. At this microsecond instance of this program, this light is not on. But this data table address has a one in it because the OTE in rung zero wrote a one to it. It is true. Since this is true, that means our branch circuit is true. And now our XIO instruction says, go look for a zero. Where? An I colon zero backslash two. Do I have one? Yes, so it's true. So we have a continuous path of trues to this OTE. This OTE is gonna go right a one. Where? To O colon zero backslash one. Now remember, it does not care if this has a one or a zero. The OTE just goes and writes it. Even though rung zero read a one, this is going to write a one right back over it. And then we're going to go and we have our end here. And when we have our end, then it's going to update its physical outputs based off of that output data table. And that is what turned on our light. Now, a lot of people look at this and they're like, okay, but the seal end should keep it there. Well, when we switch switch one off, if we just go through the program, we'll see why the sealant doesn't keep it in. The XIC here says, go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash four. Do I have one? No. So it's false. It's going to go to the OTE with false conditions, and a false OTE is going to go write a zero. Where? O colon zero backslash zero. Now it is not turning off our green light. It is simply writing a zero to a data box. Then we go to the next rung and the XIC says, go look for a one. Where? N I colon zero backslash zero. We have a zero, so it's false. Well, it goes to the branch and it comes back to the lower level. Our seal in, but 
in the end, it's still just an XIC instruction. An XIC instruction goes and looks for one, where? In O colon zero backslash zero. Now, at this microsecond instance of the program, this light was actually on, but that XIC is not looking at the light. That XIC looks at this input data box, which now has a zero from rung zero's OTE. It is false. Neither of the branches are true, so it's going to go to this XIO with false conditions. Now, the XIO is going to go look for zero, I colon zero backslash two, and it has one. It is going to be true, but we do not have a continuous path from left to right. So our OTE on rung one is going to be false. And a false OTE is going to go right at zero, where two, O colon zero backslash zero. Now it already had a zero from rung one, but it's going to write a zero again. And then it's going to come around to this end statement update its outputs, and since it has a zero, that is what's going to turn the green light off. At this point, if you're thinking which rung wins, you're definitely leaning towards rung zero. But what happens when the green button is pressed? So the green button is pressed, we can see the light came on. But let's run through it again. The XIC instructions go, says go look for our one. Where? And I colon zero backslash four. It does not have a one, so it is going to be false. The OTE with false conditions is going to go write a zero. Where is it writing at? To O colon zero backslash zero, which is our green light. Now it is just writing it to the data box, not to this light. It's gonna to go to the next rung, and this is saying, go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? Yes, so it is true. It's gonna go here to the end of the branch, comes back down to the bottom, and we get to this one, this XIC, and it says, go look for a one. Where? An O colon zero backslash zero. Now, this has a zero in it. Because remember, this OTE in rung zero just wrote a zero to that. So it is going to be false because it has a zero and it's looking for a one. It comes back. Then we're going to get to XIO here. It says, go look for a zero. Where? An I colon zero backslash two. Do I have one? Yes. So that one is true. So since this bottom branch was true through here, and this is true, we have a continuous path of trues all the way to our OTE. So a true OTE goes and writes a one. Where? To O colon zero backslash zero. Now it's going to go around, hit our end statement, and update its outputs. And since we have a one in the data box, it is turning on the green light. Now, a couple things. Every scan, rung zero is writing a zero to that box. Rung one is writing a one to that box. It is not chattering on this light. The only thing this output cares about is what's in it at that end statement. So at the end statement, it is a one. When I let off the button, we're back to where we just were a second ago. So we'll run through it really fast again since we just reviewed this one one program ago. First input, the XIC here says, go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash four. It has a zero, so it's false. The OTE false goes and writes a zero to O colon zero backslash zero. XIC here of I colon zero backslash zero says, go look for a one. It has a zero, so it's false. Gets to the end of the AND statement, goes to the bottom rung. This XIC says, go look for a one. And O colon zero backslash zero, it has a zero. Since both of these are false, it'll go in with false, but this one still says, go look for a zero. Where? And I colon zero backslash two, so it is true. But we do not have a continuous path of trues and false, just the same as time before last. So this OTE is gonna be false. So it's going to go and write a zero to O colon zero backslash zero. Then again, our end statement is going to take those data tables and update the physical outputs. And for the final one, we switch switch one back on and it was, does the red button do anything? So when we press it, the output goes off. Again, we go right through the product ladder logic and we'll see the clear answer. The X first XIC here says, go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash four. 
Go to the data table, it does have a one because switch one is switched on. So it is true. So this OTE right here is coming in with true conditions. So it goes and writes a one to O colon zero backslash zero, which is the data table associated with this light, but it's not the physical light. Then it goes to rung one and the XIC here says, go look for a one where an OI colon zero backslash zero, which is our green button. It has a zero, so it is false. It goes to the next branch and it says, go look for a one where an O colon zero backslash zero. Rung zero's OTE just wrote a one to it. This lower level of the branch is true. Then we get to this XIO here and it says, go look for a zero where an I colon zero backslash two, which is associated with this red button. Do I have a zero? No, I have a one. So it is false. Even though this branch is true, this is false. So the OTE is going to execute with false conditions. And it says, go write a zero. Where? To O colon zero backslash zero. Comes around to this end and the PLC updates its physical outputs based off the output data table. Even though every scan, this box is getting a one written to it and a zero written to it, it's what is in there when it finally gets to this end statement that matters. I hope this video has been helpful. I know there was a lot to chew on, but I think this is why these rules such as the last rung wins bothers me so much is because really usually they're covering up some misunderstanding of how ladder logic actually works. Now, by no means, I'm not saying that you should have two OTEs in a program. I mean, if I had two OTEs in a program, chances are I do have a mistake. So don't go trying to add a bunch of OTEs. In the end, the brain question, did rung zero win or did rung one win? Well, neither. The ladder code is going to win in the end, and it's going to scan in a very methodical order, and there will be a very predictable outcome. Till next time. All right. Yeah, I heard a better one. Okay, tell me your better um, way of doing all this. Listen to the superhero. <laughs> you broke his arm. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment and I'll get to you later. You all are a bunch of legends. See you next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.